love Kool-Aid. Alright, I'm gonna add some Kool-Aid. And one scoop of sugar. Hmm. I don't think it's sweet enough. I think I need to add some more sugar. Whoa! I think you put too much sugar in the drink. Hmm. Way too much. I think you're right. I should have measured. I'm gonna walk around and show everybody the bottom of the cup. Who has done this before? Why do you think this happens? I have, because uh, the water can't hold anymore. Right, so when you make a solid, like sugar, and you mix it with a liquid, like water, the solid dissolves and spreads out evenly, and none is left, so you can see the bottom of the glass. What is this called? Uh, I don't know. It's called a solution. So Mr. Josh is going to go to the board and show us what the definition is for a solution. A solution is a liquid mixture that has a substance in it that dissolves evenly. Everyone say it with me. Solution! Our glass had so much sugar that some was left at the bottom, even after we stirred it. And that's called a saturated solution. Everyone say it with me. Saturated, saturated solution. solution. Okay, so before we leave today, we will be able to answer and explain the question of the day. What is the difference between a mixture and a solution? We're going to do a lesson that requires you to follow very specific directions like scientists would if they were testing someone else's experiment. As you know, scientists pay very close attention to everything that they're working on. So now we're going to go over some rules and expectations that we have for the lesson. The first rule is be safe. That means following all directions. The second rule is think like a scientist. The third rule is listen and look when we give the attention sign. And that's the hook em sign. Remember, so we have hook em, horns. Everyone is going to get a job card for their duties in the lab today. It is important that you understand the role that you have and how to do your tasks. You should have a different job card than you did last week. Now Mr. Josh is going to come around and pass out the vocabulary worksheets. We'll be referring back to the worksheet and filling out the blanks frequently throughout the lesson. Now we'll investigate mixing substances and determining if they are mixtures or solutions. Materials managers, can you come ahead and come to the front of the room and pick up your tray of materials? Now Mr. Josh is going to come around and pass out a flowchart to everybody. For the lab today, we are going to use the flowchart that is in front of you. We'll be working in pairs. We'll do the first experiment together. And I'm going to demonstrate the first experiment in the front of the room on large scale, and y'all are going to be completing it at your table. On the flowchart, whenever it says a substance without specifying, it means using all the substance unless it specifies a specific amount. And when it says water, it means to fill the tray halfway with water, so don't overfill. Mason, can you please read what number one says on the flow chart? One pack of sugar and water. That's right. So everyone go ahead and fill their ice tray with one pack of sugar and fill it halfway with water. Then you're going to take your toothpick and you're going to stir your solution. So is, is it a mixture? Yeah. How do you know? More than one substance is mixed together. Very good. When you have two or more substances that are mixed together, we call that a mixture. The next question says, did one or more of the substances and the mixture dissolve? What do you think dissolve means? It means that the sugar disappeared in the water. Well, actually, it doesn't disappear. It's just broken down into smaller parts throughout the substance that it was put in. Now, based on that question, what was the answer on the flowchart? Uh, yes, because the sugar dissolved in the water. Very good. That makes it a special type of mixture called a solution. Question three asks you to name the substance that dissolved. What dissolved? Sugar. Very good. Write down sugar in the box, and it says that it's called a solute. Fill in the blanks on your vocab sheet for solute. Let's go on to question four. What was the name of the substance that the solute dissolved in? Water. Yes, write down water in the box, and it said it is the solvent. Don't forget to fill this in in your vocab sheet. 
So for question five, it says, are there also undissolved substances? Yes, there is still some sugar at the bottom. So let's write sugar here in number five since there is still some sugar left at the bottom. For question six, it says, did any of the substance from question five dissolve? Yes, some sugar dissolved. Very good. Some of the solute dissolved, but some of it didn't. The solution is called a saturated solution. Let's mark a check in number one that it is a saturated solution. That's how you use a flow chart. Now let's look at our mixtures worksheet and answer number one. So for our mixtures worksheet, number one says, describe what you observed after the sugar and water had been stirred together. So take a minute and talk about that question with your group. What did you write for number one on the mixtures worksheet? Some sugar dissolved and some stayed at the bottom. Great, now we're going to walk you through the second experiment of sand and water. For experiment two, we're gonna use three spoonfuls of sand and fill your tray halfway with water. Let's look at the mixtures worksheet again and answer number two. Describe what you observed after the sand and water had been stirred together. What did you put for number two? The sand stayed at the bottom of the cup and nothing dissolved. What is a physical property? What are some examples? Um, anything you can observe with your senses. Very good. A physical property is a characteristic you can observe or measure with any of your five senses. Which physical properties stayed the same and which have changed? Uh, shape is the physical property of sand that was the same. Okay, so now that everyone knows how to use the flowchart, we are going to have you do the rest of the experiments and finish your flowchart on your own. For your materials, you're going to use the same ice tray, a bag of sand, a bag of salt, a bag of pebbles, a bag of rocks, a packet of Kool-Aid, two packets of sugar, four toothpicks, two small spoons, and whenever you get to the part with the oil, raise your hand and ask a teacher and we will give you the vegetable oil. Materials managers, please come forward and get your materials. As your students are working, ask the following probing questions. Is this a mixture of solution? How do you know? What's the solute? What's the solvent? How do you know? Use your copy of the chart at the bottom of the mixtures worksheet to classify your mixtures.
What did you discover in your investigation that is a mixture from the lab? Sand and water and the rocks and pebbles. Okay, let's go ahead and record that. So for the mixtures, we have sand and water and rocks and pebbles. What did you notice about substances that were mixtures only? Uh, nothing dissolved. Okay. Which ones turned out to be a solution according to your flowchart? Give me some examples. Um, sugar and water, the Kool-Aid and water, the salt and water, the oil and Kool-Aid and water. So which ones were just a solution? Kool-Aid and water. Very good. Which ones were both a mixture and a solution? The sand, sugar, and water, the oil, Kool-Aid, and water, and the Kool-Aid, cotton, and water. Great. So which one was a saturated solution? The sugar and water. Good. What are the two basic parts of a solution called? A solute and a solvent. Very good. So what part is the solute? And what's an example? Uh, what dissolves? The sugar. Very good. So the solute is what is being dissolved. An example of that is sugar. And what part is the solvent? What is dissolving? Like the water. Very good. So the solvent is what is doing the dissolving. And an example of a solvent is water. Water is such a common solvent, it is known as the universal solvent. So far, all the solutions we have seen in the lab are solid liquid solutions. Do you think we can have a gas liquid solution? No, gas can't dissolve in a liquid. It has to be a solid. What made that fizzing sound? S gas? That's right. Gas is dissolved in this liquid. If you mix things up and they stay in an even distribution, it's called a solution. So now Mr. Josh is going to show us the three basic types of mixtures. This shows all the different types of mixtures that we have talked about today. The first one has just got two different types of solids in it. So that's an example of a mixture. The second one has the two solids in it and water's added. This is an example of a solution. And the last one is a solution with extra solid at the bottom. So this is known as a saturated solution. Now we're going to have a chemistry theater, and you are all going to be actors. Let's pretend that the whole room is a giant beaker. The wall with the door is going to be the top opening of the beaker, so the opposite wall is the bottom. The red papers represent Kool-Aid, the white papers represent sugar, and the blue papers represent water. First, let's mix some Kool-Aid and sugar together into the beaker. Let's add the Kool-Aid people first in the giant beaker. What is this an example of? Mixture. Now let's add some water to the mixture. Now, we're going to fill the cup up halfway with water. So you should all spread out across half of the room. If you are a water particle, find one Kool-Aid particle or one sugar particle to stand next to. What did we just create? A solution. Let's add some more sugar to this mixture. Where should the leftover sugar molecules go now? At the bottom of the beaker. And why can't the extra sugars dissolve? The water has dissolved too much already, so it's too saturated. The water has dissolved as much sugar as it could. It can no longer dissolve any more sugar. Let's talk a little more about mixtures and solutions. When you mix milk and chocolate together, what happens? It makes chocolate milk. And is chocolate milk a mixture or a solution? Uh, a solution because the chocolate syrup is evenly distributed in the milk. What about a glass of lemonade? Uh, that's also a solution. The lemons and sugar are distributed evenly in the water. What would, say, trail mix be considered? A mixture. Right. In trail mix, there's different nuts all mixed together in a container, which makes it a mixture. Now you will answer a few questions on your own to show off what you know.